Hello there, Gamerinos and Gamerinas. Welcome to Unicorn Storm. This is Rady, and today I'm looking at a game called Galaxy Burger. A food preparation game that looks a lot more silly than it actually is. In this game you run a burger joint in outer space and travel to different worlds to sell the inhabitants tasty burgers. Your customers contain of regular yet weird looking humans, the alluring venerians and cats in oversized mech suits. Oh boy, this is going to be wild. This has me thinking of star tenders where you are a bartender in space and use all kinds of weird and exotic ingredients to mix your drinks. I'm a huge fan of these food preparation games, doesn't matter if it's drinks, ice cream or regular cuisine. So I'm really curious now what this orbital fast food restaurant will serve. It's regular burgers. Alright, I can live with that. The ingredients are utterly mundane, though the burger designs do get rather creative and just the act of stacking all the ingredients on top of each other gives this game its own spin. So let's take a closer look. So in this game you have a space traveling fast food restaurant, with which you are able to visit the planets in our solar system and serve to all kinds of wacky customers. You start off in the orbit of Mercury in a really small restaurant with a cheap kitchen and just a handful of ingredients. By selling food to customers and maintaining a high satisfaction level, you earn enough money to acquire permits for running your restaurant in the orbit of other planets. And it seems real estate gets more expensive the further we are away from the sun. All planets have a different setup. The gameplay stays broadly the same, but your workspace gets shuffled around with each new kitchen. And certain tools and appliances can also differ from level to level. Your grill and cutting board turn out bigger or smaller in a new restaurant. Your deep fryer might have more baskets, stuff like that. And you have a different selection of ingredients in each level, though generally the selection increases. Now having more tools and more ingredients doesn't mean the game becomes more free form. More possible ingredients and ways to cook make the process harder, not easier. Because the available ingredients determine what your customers will order. So more ingredients mean more possible recipes you need to keep track of. At first on Mercury, you have only access to simple hamburgers and cheeseburgers, you can only pour ketchup on them and you have a disgustingly small selection of vegetables to put on your burgers. So the process of preparing the food your customers want is really simple. Well, that soon changes as you unlock more and more ingredients by traveling to higher class locations and additionally with your rising rank on each planet. The process of preparing food is rather straightforward. It's completely mouse driven, though you can use the keyboard for camera control. You turn on your appliances with a mouse click, and too often I forgot about that, and you also grab all your ingredients with a mouse click, one by one. And then you drag them wherever it is you need them, either on the grill or on the burger or whatever else is possible. One by one. I haven't discovered a way to make this faster. Like, your customer wants specifically four pieces of onion and stuff like that, but instead of clicking four times to grab them and put them on the burger, you have to move your mouse back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And these demands get ludicrous later on. Stuff like, put three pieces of lettuce on the burger, then a slice of cheese and then four more pieces of lettuce. And you have to grab each single ingredient and put it on the burger by hand. And this kinda leads me to the one real problem I have with this game, though it's a big one. It doesn't respect your time. Especially in a larger kitchen, the act of grabbing ingredients and moving them wherever you need them can be a bit cumbersome. Many of the orders you receive are random lists of ingredients which get absurd at times and require you to cook way more that can fit on your grill. And that means you have to wait before you can wait some more for the meat to be done. And it's not uncommon for a customer to order a regular burger with five extra ingredients and a special burger that already has more ingredients with a bunch of extra ingredients. It's quite funny, yeah, but when you want to optimize, the lack of either shortcuts or more complex controls, simply the lack of control over your kitchen can get rather annoying. Now in regular mode, you can just take your time. Customers are infinitely patient and it also seems you only need to pay for the ingredients once in any order. So there's just no downside to taking things slow or doing things over if you're not satisfied. It's your own time you're wasting, in addition to the time the game's already wasting. There's also nothing stopping you from just preparing a million ingredients ahead of time and just use them when you finally need them. 
food doesn't get cold like in order up and customers don't get impatient like in any other food preparation game. The game gets as challenging or complicated as you want to at any given moment. Depending on where you stand on this, this might either be the greatest approach ever or completely misguided design for a game like this. I am more or less in the middle on this. I think it's fine to have your players create their own challenge, but the main punishment for having an easier experience is wasting more of your time. And I'm not overly fond of that with how long it can take to prepare the food and how expensive the permits for later planets are, you're gonna do the same thing over and over again, a lot, to unlock all the levels. Now, it's not unusual or unexpected for food preparation games to have you do the same or similar things over and over again. I mean, you're running a virtual kitchen, how much variety can there actually be? Even in the space bartender game, you can only throw in so many different mechanics. Well, the answer is, there can be a huge amount of variety in your food preparation game. As much as you're willing to program. Order Up isn't the most polished game, but you had to prepare each dish in a different way using motion controls. And my favorite in this genre, Cook Surf Delicious, has a different mechanic for each dish or beverage. And every step has its own hotkey, so if you've mastered a dish, you can prepare it lightning fast. For a lasagna, you have to layer the different ingredients in the correct order. The chicken has to be tenderized. Fries have to be deep fried for the correct amount of time. A beer has to be poured so that there's a delicious layer of foam on top. And the burger patties have to be grilled for the right amount of time. And then the burger has to be assembled in the correct order. In Galaxy Burger, everything is just a waiting game. Ingredients are either served raw or cooked. And cooking them means just putting them on the grill and waiting for a little indicator to fill up. Sometimes you can wait a bit longer to have it cook more, like your meat can be medium or well done, but most ingredients will just burn if you're leaving them too long on the grill. Your deep fryers require even less awareness. Just put the food in and after a while it's ready and you can take it out whenever you want. Drinks only require you to push a button and wait until the cup has been filled. There are no other minigames, no onion cutting, no bun slicing, nothing gets marinated. You just select your ingredients and wait, then assemble them. Now it's still fun to do so. Stacking your burger is incredibly satisfying and with the pleasant pixel art, you just want to do it perfectly. But there's not much depth to the gameplay. Later levels give you the opportunity to serve multiple customers simultaneously, which can result in a little bit of time management and optimization. But the thing that works against it is the randomized orders. You don't know what customers want until you've taken their order, so you can't really strategize with this. But the new order might include stuff like five additional slices of bacon and three additional fried eggs, and please do this three times, which is just too much for your stove to handle. There's no downside to just not serving that customer until you're done with the other orders, but then there's not much optimizing going on, isn't there? Cook Surf Delicious tackled this in a more clever way. Each customer only orders a single item from your menu and you see what they want as soon as they arrive at the restaurant. It might be a bit gamey, but it just works. So now you decide in which order you tackle all the orders to make the most of what little time you have before customers are tired of waiting. Some orders might contain meat that needs to fry for some time before you can finish the dish. So prepare them and while you wait for the meat to be done, you can do the other orders. Now something like this can happen in this game. While the patties fry on your grill, you can prepare a vegetable sandwich. But again, you don't see what customers want beforehand and in the early levels, you have to serve one customer at a time. Again, the food preparation itself is fun and in later kitchens you get higher powered stoves where you can turn up the heat to double the amount to make things go a bit faster. But it doesn't change the fact that the overall design of this game is just a bit misguided. It's a waiting game and trying to do multiple things at once is not really encouraged, not really rewarded and because of that, not really advisable. Now this could be a way smoother experience in multiplayer. I sadly wasn't able to try that, but with the multiplayer option, each player controls a disembodied cook and helps prepare the food. Now grabbing all these single ingredients is a lot faster. You still have to wait for everything to cook, but I'm sure it's a much faster paced experience. Which has me pondering how the recipe book works in multiplayer. Because that one is another misguided mechanic. You can open the book and read up on any recipe you've discovered or unlocked. 
Now, recipes aren't really a help to your efforts. It's more like a menu. Everything in the cookbook is fair game for customers to order. As long as the required ingredients are available in your kitchen. But customers also order custom burgers, where they just tell you what they want on it and you jot it down in your little note, having it visible during the preparation process. Aha! So it's just to make it a bit harder. You have to remember how these recipes go. Not really, you can look up any recipe at any time. And customers still want additional ingredients with these ones, but sometimes you also have to leave something out. I once had to prepare a regular burger and a cheeseburger without cheese. Yeah, it was funny. So I guess there's a little bit of misdirection here to keep you thinking on your toes. But in multiplayer, someone opening and closing the recipes all the time will get infuriating pretty fast, but there's just no way to remember all the 50 or so recipes. Now, there are a few more game modes and you unlock them for each planet separately by increasing your rank on that planet. Endless service where customers just keep coming and a mode where the time you take to prepare a dish affects the customer's satisfaction. Your rank increases by accumulating satisfaction. Aside from special customers, your maximum satisfaction with each order, no matter how large or small or complicated, is 100. And I've found that the rating is a bit inconsistent. I haven't really found out why I sometimes get a slightly lower rating. It's not the order of ingredients because I deliberately mixed up the order and still get a hundred percent. Maybe it just measures how crooked you stack the burger. Well, and of course, wrong ingredients lower the rating. Increasing your rank takes quite long. And with only a hundred points per order, if you got it right according to the sometimes inconsistent rating and with the vastly different meal preparation times, there's not much you can do to speed it up there's no room to optimize. Now, you don't really need the high ranks, though they come with some benefits like extra ingredients and higher earnings. And I guess unlocking the endless service mode too early makes the game too easy since you generate infinite money that way. But the easiest solution would have been to switch the two unlockable game modes around. Have you unlock the mode where customers rate your time first and have the endless service mode as the final reward for each planet. Because being timed is the more interesting mode, but it doesn't lower the difficulty, it even raises it. And endless service can then just be your final reward if you just want to chill out while making burgers without being interrupted by the results screen every two minutes or so. Now you might think that endless service makes it easier to unlock the final rank, because you don't run out of customers and aren't thrown back to the menu screen. But that's only a slight benefit. Because to get from rank 3 to rank 4 you need 9000 points. And with only a hundred max per customer, I just can't be asked to slog through it. Instead, I'm just happy with meeting new people and learning my way around different kitchens, remembering burger recipes and enjoy the look of it all when you stack all those deliciously pixelated ingredients on top of each other. Maybe the developers should tone down the absurdly random recipes a bit and then it can be a cozy and relaxing food preparation game that should really be on mobile devices. A game that doesn't respect my time and has me mostly doing menial tasks is perfect for something you play on the bus or maybe during your break while eating a burger yourself or something like that. It's not a game I enjoy sitting down on my couch for or at a desk, but playing it while waiting for the train or maybe play one or two shifts before going to sleep. Yeah, I could get into that, but it's not deep enough to hold my attention for long periods of time and the uncontrolled randomness discourages me from trying to strategize or optimize. If you enjoy cooking games or these food preparation games and you don't really care for the problems I've highlighted, well, then this might be the game for you. I mean, even with my criticisms, I got a good portion of fun out of it and the pleasant design really does a lot to make it more enjoyable. But the game leaves still a lot of room for improvement. But with that, I'm off. You have an amazing day, this has been Rady, and I hope to see you again on the next game.